Hey, Foundry friends, it's Eric Peterson, the campus pastor out at Foundry West, and it's my privilege to read the introduction to week five of the Wait devotional series. And this is about King David. So it says this, what is one of the first things that comes to mind when you hear the words King David? Do you automatically think of some of the things he's best known for? Some of those may be the Goliath story or the years he spent running from King Saul. But perhaps one of the most significant things we should remember about David is a statement that God himself penned through the words of Paul. It says that David was, quote, a man after God's own heart, end quote. That's in Acts 13, verse 22. What do you suppose that means? I like how Chuck Swindoll explains it. And Chuck says this, quote, I've found David to care about the things I care about. He's a man whose heart beats in sync with mine, God's. When I look right, he looks right. When I look left, he looks left. When I say I care about that, David says, I care about that too, end quote. David comes on the scene when he was roughly 17 years old. At this point, David was merely a servant for his dad. When the prophet Samuel came to Jesse's house to anoint the new king, David's dad almost didn't even remember him, or at least he chose him last. Even though David was anointed at the age of 17, he didn't actually move into the role of king until after Saul, the current king, had died. This happened when David was 30 years old. Once he became king, David ruled over Israel for 40 years. What is most interesting in studying David's life are some of the events that happened in his life between ages 17 and 30. It was during this time that David learned countless lessons about himself, about purpose, about who God is, about how to become a leader who cared about the things that God cared about. David experienced running for his life, depression, defeat, and loneliness during these years. God saw David, and when David really needed it, God was there and gave him the encouragement that he needed. This came in many different forms. Some examples of this are his family visited when he thought they had forgotten him. A band of 400 men, who would later become his royal guard, became loyal friends. And another time, a woman named Abigail prevented David from acting foolishly in his anger. When the throne finally became empty, David remained humble enough to ask God if it was time for him to enter Judah and begin to lead the nation. He didn't jump at the first chance to take power, as would normally happen in ancient monarchies, but he let things play out. He inquired of God, and in a space of seven and a half years, eased into becoming the king of the whole land of Israel. David began to powerfully expand the kingdom by fighting and conquering all of Israel's enemies. He enlarged the borders of the kingdom from an area of about 6,000 square miles to 60,000 square miles. He had hold of trade routes that crossed all parts of the known world. David became one of the mightiest kings of the day. It seemed everything was at a pinnacle for David. But as we know, when things are super good, it's just as easy to fall. And that was exactly what happened to David. We're reminded that David was human and like all of us, sinful. David committed a sin that, quote, displeased the Lord, end quote. That's in 2 Samuel 11, verse 27. This compromising decision and the lack of confession until about a year later when his cover-ups all failed led to tragic results. It affected not only himself, but his entire family. God once again showed David what grace was through this trial. And again, David began to fully lean on God, pouring his heart out through song. You can see Psalm 32 and Psalm 40 and Psalm 51 are examples of that. At the end of his life, there was a climactic scene in which David was passing the torch onto his son Solomon. David was never able to fulfill his lifelong dream of building a place of worship for God. But that didn't stop him from doing everything in his power 
to make provisions for Solomon to do it. The story wrapped up with David openly praising God in front of all the massive group of officials, leaders, and commanders from all over the nation of Israel. He encouraged everyone to continue to follow God, to serve him with their whole hearts, and to remember that everything in life belongs to God. So don't pursue things. Pursue the one who owns it all. So I encourage you as you participate in this week's devotions that the Lord would, would speak to you and that you'd follow him and you'd be obedient um, as he seeks to transform your life from the inside out. Amen.